So once again, we're covering Pacific Drive. And I hope you're buckled in and ready for a bumpy ride. Because we've been covering this game for the past six months, ever since we saw the initial teasers for it. And we had the chance to play the demo earlier this month and get a small taste for it. We're going to be taking a look at all the survival mechanics along with the full game. But the question remains, are you ready for a drive in Pacific Drive? Pacific Drive takes place in an alternate timeline, where in 1947, a new promising technology begins research in the Olympic Peninsula. Over the next eight years, weird sightings, disappearance, and overnight excavations create a weird situation where finally in 1955, walls start going up in this research area, creating the Olympic Exclusion Zone. Over the next 30 years, more and more walls going up until eventually, one day, they seal off all the exits and entrances to the Olympic Exclusion Zone and making it inaccessible to all. To this day, there have been no explanation of what happened there, what's going on there, or what to this day is still happening in that zone. You unfortunately were delivering a package while driving nearby and found yourself within those walls. One of the first things I noticed about Pacific Drive that sets it apart from other survival games is that it doesn't start you off in a post-apocalyptic world, it doesn't start you off in the Stone Age, it starts you off in these exclusion walls that keep you away from the rest of society and just enjoying your life. Inside these walls, you have to survive. Luckily, you're able to come across one of the only working vehicles in the zone, according to the people that you find in there. But the car actually becomes most of your survival needs. The car replaces a lot of the things of food, water, other types of nutritional stuff that your character normally would have. And instead, your car needs fuel, repairs, new parts. You need to upgrade it to be able to do different things, as well as improve your chances out there. Because there's a lot of things trying to kill you, and your car is one of the only things keeping you alive. But at the same time, it's also one of the things that's slowly driving you mad, and will eventually lead to your death unless something changes. The whole goal of this game is the effort and energy that you're putting into it is to try to get out of these walls and back to your life of just being a delivery driver if you wish to go back to that again. But I enjoy the fact that this game really puts a paramount upon repairing your vehicle. Because your vehicle is your lifeline in the Olympic Exclusion Zone and while you do start off with a car that is in need of much repair and love. You end up finding out when you first go out driving that your vehicle is always going to be taking damage every time you go out to collect materials, progress the storyline, or do more. The reality of this game is that while the character needs and other situations are put onto the vehicle, you end up enjoying repairing your vehicle and maintaining it, and you kind of become attached to the vehicle the more and more you repair it, or at least that's what happened in my experience. Luckily, Pacific Drive gives you a beautiful garage to go in and maintain your vehicle with a panel on the wall that allows you to look at the status of the vehicle and its overall health and allows you to easily repair the vehicle back up. There are other cool things while you're out on the road and the abilities to be able to scan each individual car park to be able to see what kit is required to do so. They do provide kits that can be made from materials, whether it's in the garage or out on the road, and that being the repair putty, the ceiling phone, the mechanics kit, or even the electrical kit, and more. The overall goal of repairing your vehicle is to always keep it in tip-top shape and to prepare for the worst situation where you're out in the zones, because you're always going to be taking damage when you're out there, whether it's from anomalies, driving off-road, or other situations like I did where I accidentally got to Adventurous and drove over a cliff and rolled my car six or seven times. I was very fortunate to have a ceiling kit inside my car where I was able to repair my flat tire, but the rest of my car was pretty damaged, making it for a very weird experience trying to get back to my garage to repair my vehicle. I do enjoy the fact that the repair system in this game allows you to replace much of the character requirements, often putting it onto the vehicle, but it doesn't feel grindy or unnecessary, often making the repair process not feel like a mechanic simulator, but rather that you're having fun and really enjoying repairing your vehicle and maintaining it while still having the elements of survivability attached to it. Overall, I do enjoy the repair system in this game, and I can't wait to talk to you about the upgrade system because there are so many cool ways to make this car truly unique to your kind of playstyle, as well as make it really badass looking.
And that's where the technology system really plays into the survivability aspects of this game. Because when you're out and about and you're in a zone, you're going to be scanning odd wrecks, car parts, or other materials, and they're going to possibly unlock recipes. But the other thing that you're going to be gathering when you're out and about is stable and unstable energy. So when you do come back to the garage, you can go to the research station and you can unlock anything from upgraded engines to lightning rods on your car to new storage racks or plenty of other really cool things as well as upgrading your garage. It is a nice upgrade system because there is a plethora of options for you to look at and it looks like there are a lot of play, um, parts and technologies that you may have to look at researching to make yourself have an easier time in specific zones or areas that might offer a harder time if you don't have the right loadout for your vehicle. But overall, the tech system in this game really makes me excited because there are just so many options. And these options are so helpful against the anomalies you discover while out on the road. Because the anomalies are like the survival enemies of most survival games. You have your environmental ones as well as your NPC ones. You also have good anomalies and bad anomalies out there. So you do have to be wary because almost every anomaly is going to hurt your vehicle in some fashion if you interact with them in the wrong way. And I do enjoy that this survival mechanic was included in the game rather than just worrying about the zone always collapsing on you and scrambling you up, you also have to worry about the environmental anomalies as well as NPC um, anomalies causing you harm or using a so-called good anomaly improperly. Two examples of bad um, anomalies could be the huge car magnet anomalies roaming around that will literally attach to the front of your car and drag you through the woods or off-road or whatever else, causing you to smash into crash into things. They purposely try to crash you into things. Another bad anomaly that is very apparent is the can opener. One of the first ones you encounter very early on in the game, you obviously want to avoid it. A good example of maybe a good anomaly is the jump boost anomaly ramp one, which I would highly suggest using because it's fun, but if you hit the ramp wrong, you can easily flip your car or smash into a tree, which isn't very good. It also hurts your tires a little bit, even if you do the jump properly, so do be aware of using those too often. Overall, I enjoy the fact that the world has these anomalies and they are threats. What's cool about this too is you can get out of your vehicle and scan them and you'll get a little data log providing you some information and it's written from the point of view of someone who has experienced them. I will state you should be wary of uh, getting too close to anomalies because they do give off some radiation from some anomalies hurting you, the player, um, as well as your vehicle. So it's good to be hesitant on them. One of the other things I enjoy about the survival mechanics of Pacific Drive is that every zone changes when you leave or the zone collapses upon itself, which is a really nice mechanic because it allows you to revisit the zones and experience them in a different way to gather materials or the landscape or the building layout and to truly have a one-of-a-kind experience every time you go out and about. The other cool thing that I really enjoy about the explorations of these zones is that with the route planner you're able to click on the place you wish to go to and see how much fuel it's going to take, the anomaly sustainability, and what kind of materials and stuff it's going to present. Because mind you, it's good to just randomly go out there, but you are going to try to be a little bit more specific on where you're going to be getting your materials or what materials you're looking for to improve your car or to repair your vehicle or to discover new things. And this is really nice with the route planner because the further and further you go out, the more and more gas you use and maybe the better materials there are or there might be better materials for home. It also tells you whether or not the area has like high contamination or extreme harsh conditions or whatever, which means that you can know ahead of time when you go there if you're going to be facing like a lot of anomalies or aggressive anomalies or like my experience with a high gale gust winds that literally almost rolled my car when I ran, uh, took a corner too sharp at too high of a speed. These kind of things are really cool because it really gives a refreshing take when you're trying to play the game in a more survivalistic kind of attitude, and I really enjoy that fact. Go ahead and talk about material collection. 
materials and inventory. In Pacific Drive, materials are quite easy to gather with the proper tools. You're gonna, you get a crowbar, a scrapper, impact wrench, a vacuum, and more tools that can be upgraded through the tech bench to be better. But they're very easily craftable, whether it's the bench at the garage or the crafting mat inside of your car. Inventory-wise, I will have to say, while there's a wider range of writing materials, most raw materials don't take up a lot of inventory space, and they all stack pretty nicely. I will have to say that the inventory system is a grid-based system, which is quite nice, so it's very easy for you to organize. Most materials are a 1x2 setup, but the more important, or I would say rather useful the item is, the more inventory slots it takes up. For example, a spare tire is a 2x2, where a crowbar is a 1x2 grid space, and so on and so on. So you do have to be aware of the materials. However, there are plenty of ways for you to store the materials on your car from the get-go, and it makes it very easy to do some supply runs. However, I bet doing supply runs later in the game, it becomes more and more harder to manage your inventory, and do so, you'll probably be upgrading your storage on your vehicle. We have really enjoyed the voice acting and the characters inside of Pacific Drive, and the reason why we've really enjoyed the characters in Pacific Drive, is that it really makes you want to learn more about Toby and Francis and the lady who seems very gruff and upset with you for being there. But they give enough details for you to be curious or interested in them, but not so many details that like you feel you already know who they are and what their purpose is and all they're there for is just to be your guide or some person talking on the radio. And the fact that you can't respond to them and they're just talking blatantly to you kind of gives you the fact that like they're also very lonely people and they're trying to be very interactive with you, which is very nice. Quirks and Pacific Drive is an interesting take on a survival mechanic that I think is quite original in Pacific Drive. While many other games may have quirks for players, not many games have quirks for items or for vehicles. Well, yes, I know the vehicle is technically a remnant, which may be living or not. We really don't know much about it. It is interesting that the car can develop these quirks that can be beneficial to you or harmful to you in different situations. Like, for example, your car may randomly uh, open the hood and then close the hood and turn on the dome light at the same exact time. Uh, it's annoying and it could be dangerous if you're driving if it opens the hood. But other situations are, it can turn off your car. What's interesting with Pacific Drive is that the quirks aren't permanent, and it allows you to go to a diagnostic bench and actually try to figure out what starts, what happens, where it happens, and finally see if you can figure out what the problem is. And it will tell you what you need to do on your vehicle to fix the issue, because with the repair system like we talked about, you're going to be repairing your vehicle, but you may not understand or know that there's a part on your vehicle that needs to be repaired to fix that diagnostic issue or that quirk. And it's really interesting that that is part of the survival in the game because these quirks can be very dangerous to you, or they can be extremely helpful, or they can be anywhere in between. And it's cool that there's such a gray area in this quirk system. Let's go ahead and talk about death inside of Pacific Drive, or as they call it, failed runs. Now, the default fail run setting, when you do die as a player in Pacific Drive, when you're out on a run, you will be returned to the garage, and the default setting will make you lose some items. However, they have given us three options if you wish to make it harder on yourself for a more of a survival feel. Option one is to lose some items, option two is to keep all items, and option three is to lose all items. Now, I don't know if you lose all of your items inside your car's inventory as well as the player or if you keep certain items, but the situation is there. And it is kind of nice that they have allowed there are options for players to choose from. The Pacific Drive has already thought ahead and has given plenty of gameplay options in the menu, allowing you to really adjust how you wish to play the game. Whether you want to make it easier on yourself, giving yourself an infinite feel, or having the car fully repaired when you go into the garage, or making it harder on yourself, like when you do a failed uh, supply run, you lose everything in the vehicle or on your player. 
there are so many options to tweak and play with that actually can make this go from a easier survival game to a lot harder of a survival game. And I really appreciate about that. So those are all the survival mechanics that I was able to experience so far inside of a Pacific Drive. However, the game has vastly more possibilities and I really hope you take the chance to give Pacific Drive a real go because the game has so much more to explore, so much more to experience. And when it comes to if it actually hits a lot of survival notes, I would have to say State of Survival definitely thinks that this is a game that has enough survival in it to really be a survival game without it being too much of a chore to survive while experiencing a lot of the fun. Luck so this is my personal take on what I think of Pacific Drive outside of the survival mechanics. And it's coming from Dump Gras. I actually enjoyed the game because it felt like I was still playing a survival game, which I really love survival games, but it was casual enough for me that I wasn't constantly stressing about how fast can I do things and how fast can I do this or how quickly can I survive but I still had to work to maintain my vehicle. I still had to be aware of the situations and the environments. Um, like I said earlier in the uh, review of the survival mechanics, I rolled down a hill and I rolled like six or seven times and my vehicle was messed up. Like my windshield was incredibly cracked. Most of my doors were all destroyed or badly damaged. It took me a while to fix it, but I enjoyed the effort to try to fix it and I enjoyed the struggle to try to get to the stable anchors to be able to like power through to be able to escape the incoming temporal storm and it was fun because I wasn't necessarily like struggling to do it but I also had a small sense of like you got to do this you don't have a lot of time you got to hurry up and that was enjoyable for me. The other thing I really thought I wouldn't like, and to be honest, was the route planner. I thought I wasn't going to like the fact that I was going to have to literally click on a place and then watch myself drive there. And now that i played the game, I can honestly say I'm happy with it. I like it. It's far better than I thought it was because it gives me the sense of feeling that I actually did travel that length. And now I'm just exploring an area because the area between the garage and the place I did go to was, you know, not possible for me to stop or do anything with. And the Olympic Peninsula makes sense. There may have been a lot of forests or high stone walls or whatever that I couldn't just work with. And I like the driving. Once you finally get to the zones, it is nice that I did have to use fuel to get to the zone, which is a good thing. But it's once I get to the zone, I'm able to drive as much as I want and really, really drive the vehicle. And, you know, hitting mud puddles makes it slippery. You know, driving fast, it makes it hard to uh, control the car. If that magnetic um, anomaly attaches to your vehicle, it's very difficult to break away from it. I've only been able to do it once, but most times that thing just tosses me around and smashes me into everything it can get. But I actually enjoy that kind of situation. And the car has a lot of interesting situations to it that make it really have its own personality. And I wasn't sure about whether or not I wanted my vehicle to have a personality, but that quirk system is so interesting that it really makes you diagnose what the quirk is. I mean, how cool is that? Overall, my personal opinion of the game is that it's definitely worth playing. And if you're on the fence about it, go watch some reviews. Watch other reviews other than mine. I really suggest you give it a chance because maybe you don't um, you know, want to play it for the survival mechanics. Maybe you want to play it for the ease of access or whatever. You know, just listen to other people about it. But overall, I'm happy with this game and I hope you give Pacific Drive a chance. But yeah, this is awesome. Uh, have a great night. And, uh, don't forget to uh, like and subscribe. Talk to you later.